we're very connected with our local region and our commune that we live in, they get happy whenever they find out we've grown. You know, they'll, we go in the grocery store and they say, you're more sisters now, aren't you? And we say, yes. And they said, that's a wonderful thing. And yet, none of them are Catholics. We're the only Catholics in our commune, except for one Filipino woman. So it's beautiful because they want us there. Even the Church of Norway, the Lutherans, want us there. Recently, the Bishop of Nidaros Domen in Trondheim, the Lutheran Bishop, came for a visit. And at the end, we had had a very deep uh, dialogue with her, the community and she. And when we left, I said, thank you. I sense this wasn't just a political visit, uh, as it can be sometimes, or a courtesy, but something really happened between us. And she said, for me, it was sheer joy. Well, first of all, I think it's an act of worship. It's giving to God, giving him, uh, asking him for a blessing for you. It's certainly, it's a, we pray for all our benefactors. So you will have prayers from this. And I think that's the best, best gift we can give you. You will always have a warm welcome at Tautra as a guest. We have a retreat house, only 12 rooms, but it's, and it's family style. It's, you know, the guest houses where we used to live. They're family, Norwegian homes, you might say, uh, but right by the fjord on a beautiful island. And you're very welcome there for a quiet retreat to share in our liturgy. The other way that young people could benefit is coming for a period as a volunteer. They can come from a month to a year. And in every case, we, when we interview the young people, they say, you know, we came to help you, but you also helped us. Sometimes a person has a gap year, doesn't know what to do with their life, and there's no pressure to come to us. We just help them on their way. Some have no belief, and we help them with belief. When we came to Norway, we knew we needed something to earn our living. In our order, we don't live by alms, we live by making our own products. So we thought about the soap because it was something healthy, and Norwegians want healthy products. Uh, so we put things together in various ways. I was the, the, the soap sister in the beginning, and over the years, it's been good. We make every bar of soap as a prayer for peace, and that's very important for us. We also pay, pray for the people who, who take the soap products. So it's been wonderful. Uh, at this point in our living, the soap industry hasn't grown as much as we need for the new members we feed. So we can't uh, earn our total living from soap and we're in the process of trying to find a new industry to supplement the soap income. We still get as much as we got, but it's not enough for the new mouths to feed. So that's our challenge right now. But the soap has been a wonderful dialogue tool. tool. Even the queen uh, at one point ordered cosmetic jars for her birthday party on her royal yacht. It, it's just been a wonderful, a wonderful way of meeting people.